Hey guys, Cloud here, and today we are doing kind of a uh, newer version of an older video I have. The older video still works. This is dynamic lore. So what dynamic lore means is lore that can have multiple elements depending on conditions or can have uh, elements that are dependent on conditions. So for example, here we have durability with a value, and the value came from this dot test player on this scoreboard. Uh, so we are copying numbers from a scoreboard onto the item. Uh, this is using the new slash item command. And it's it's pretty powerful what this can do. You can do a lot of stuff with this. So let's go ahead. Uh, in case you didn't know, this is 100% for a snapshot. Um, so you're going to need to be playing in the 1.17 or in a snapshot. So in 1.17, you're going to have to go into your data pack, make a new folder called item modifiers, go into that, and make a JSON file name it i'm just going to call this uh demo lore for you guys i'll clear all this out okay so now we're going to go to misode.github.io select the item modifiers tab and this is where you can start messing with stuff so for this video we care about set lore so this is down here now with set lore you can add lore obviously and there's two options replace true uh, or really just no replace. I mean, it'll infer false. So the cool thing about this is if you want for organizational purposes, you can have multiple lore updating things and you apply them in multiple commands, but it kind of builds the lore, which is going to be a lot more efficient than the other. So what I do is I go ahead and do plus with the lore. I go ahead and call this an array. And then now I do objects. Okay, so the reason why is that lore is an array of arrays. So if you want to... I guess you would also want to do another array. Okay, so now you have an array of arrays, right? So when you're doing lore, you have one line that has tell raw stuff, okay? And then you have another line that has tell raw stuff. And each line needs to have arrays if you want to have something dynamic with like words and numbers. So we're gonna start building this. So let's go ahead and do add another object to this. So we're gonna have words and then a number. Okay. So words will be durability. Just like that. Out of space. All right. Let's make it a color. We'll just go with blue. It can be Unicode. You know, you can do hashtag stuff. All right. And then let's, we could do a font. There's all this stuff you can do with it. But that's all we're doing with this guy. Uh, also, italics false so that it doesn't do italicized because it assumes italics in lore. Okay, so now this is where the score stuff comes in. So you go to score, you hit plus, you put a name. Let's do dot test. Let's do this objective. Could be any objective you want. Now the name could be uh, at S. Okay, you could do that if you want. But we're just going to do dot test. Because uh, fake players are probably a better way to do things than selectors. They're more efficient. Value, not 100% sure what value means. We're just going to leave this blank. Uh, you don't need it for this. Then let's go with color. Let's make it aqua. Let's go ahead and do italic false. Okay, so what this will do is it will create an array of arrays for a lore. And the first array of the arrays will have two elements. And those two elements is the name, durability, and the score. Okay, so we're going to copy this into demo lore. Save it. Type reload. Uh, and now we're going to do slash item entity at s weapon dot main hand modify with demo lore uh, so you might notice that there is something blank here and it's not showing the number what you need to do is specify an entity otherwise it just does not allow you to edit data so he has it as unset you need to specify as this and once you specify an entity then you're good and this will make at s be the uh, player we also need to remove this text that's blank Otherwise, it tries to do a text. So now you can see the number. But you also see our failed mistakes because it's not replacing. So for this guy, we would love to just replace. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's delete this blank text. Let's make sure that it says this. And now it'll look proper. Cool. So that's how you do dynamic lore with a number. You can apply this to other things. So let's go ahead and delete. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this guy and this guy. And let's just go with two more. And let's make the play the owner. 
So now we can have like an owner for the weapon. So like they own this weapon. And then we can do selector, add S, italic false, color, light purple, italic false, color, dark purple. And you want to make sure that this plain text is empty. It will show up, it will populate, but you want it to be empty. So we're going to make a new one called demo lore one. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply the durability and then we're going to apply the owner. And you'll see that it kind of just, just builds from there. You could do uh, this stuff, the owner stuff inside the durability if you want. It's just kind of a way of organization. So I'm going to turn off true. It would be more efficient if you combine them, um, but I'm just showing this for the sake of example. So demo lore one, we'll say owner. And again, this text needs to be deleted. So now if I run it and it will have my mistake. So let's go ahead and do this in commands. Imagine this is in a data pack. So you would run that then you would run that and you would click it and uh, it does the selector of add us so we would need to make sure it's as at p so just because this will work if, if you did add s and this was in a function they would work but as at p run And there you go, durability 69, owner Cloud Wolf. And it kind of like, you can stack it based on that. You can do conditionals in your command blocks to kind of build it up like this, or you can explore doing conditionals inside of this. So you could run this and then you could do a new set lore entry. And this set lore would happen based on a condition. And the condition could be that the entity properties of this entity were based on a scoreboard value. So you can do all that stuff. You can check for MBT, check if the selected item has a certain tag, then add this to it. So you can do conditions. You could build everything in one place, but then it's all in a JSON, or you can do conditionals on commands and determine which slash item you want to run. So that's all the stuff I want to show you for this dynamic lore. This is a way better method than before, just a slash item with a JSON file. And you have easier capabilities. You don't need to have a sign. You don't have to do data modify and data modify and copy back and slash loot. Um, so it's a lot cleaner and you can do this cool stuff. Uh, you can do all kinds of uh, MBT parsing inside of the lore files. As long as you fix the editors you're using that add the word text and add the word don't do entity this. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.